today I am making an herb infused honey and herb infused honeys are awesome for many reasons. Reason number one, it lasts four years. Reason number two, they're delicious because it's all soaked in honey. And reason number three, it has a ridiculous amount of health benefits. So honey by itself has been used for um, hundreds of years for its medicinal purposes. It is antimicrobial, which is awesome. Um, just all by itself, it's that. And so when you infuse it with other things, um, how honey is made, or I shouldn't say made because the bees make it, um, but its properties that it has is it will extract all of the um, water solubles out of whatever you're infusing it with. Plus it'll extract all of the essential oils out of it. So it creates this very like chemically complex, like it, you get all of that goodness. You get all of the goodness from whatever you're infusing um, into the honey. And so today specifically we'll be making garlic infused honey. Um, garlic has also been used for hundreds of years for its medicinal purposes and is ridiculously good for you. It's antimicrobial, it's antifungal, anti-inflammatory, it's good for your digestive tract, it's good for pretty much everything. Um, but snacking on raw garlic, I've known one person in my life who does that and she smelled terrible. So we're not doing that. When you infuse it in the honey, the garlic takes on like a really sweet flavor um, and it becomes really delicious. It tastes almost like a sweet wild onion um, and it's super snacky. I, Ben eats it every single day and I cannot keep up with how much he eats. It does take about a month to create though. So you gotta take that into consideration when you're doing it. So when you are infusing with honey, you want to get a uh, raw local honey and you want it to be local because of all of the bees in this area. They will collect all of the pollens and so then it actually puts that pollen into your system. So if you have really bad allergies, I'm not saying this will help, but it will help. Or if you have mild allergies, it'll probably help. Um, but by eating that, your body kind of builds up an immune to those pollens so then your allergy season isn't as bad. Um, when you get those local pollens into your system. So that's why everyone tells you to use local honey. Um, and you definitely want it to be raw um, just because it's better. When you're getting your honeys, be careful and look at the ingredients. So a lot of honeys nowadays will come with high fructose corn syrup and you want it to say only honey. That's it. So these only say honey. A lot of them nowadays will come with high fructose corn syrup in it, and that's not what we're going for. I'm not sure if it will infuse right. Um, it doesn't need to be unfiltered. The one that I have is unfiltered, but as long as it's raw local honey, that's really all that's important. So, and then just make sure it doesn't have any weird extra additive. But my favorite part um, is if you pull an Yzma and smash it. It gets everywhere. If you get some of your aggression out, leave it, Timber. Um, but then you just smash. Smash all of them. So once you get them all smashed out, just kind of pick through them. They're still gonna have all their skins on them. But like, if you have one with a bad one, obviously that's going in the trash can. But you chuck them in the jar. And a lot of you have probably heard of this. Those ones are bad. Um, and then you just shake it to death. You just shake it to death in the jar. And by shaking it to death in the jar, you get the remainder of these skins off of here. And then it's super easy. I still think it's annoying. And I personally make a huge mess while doing this, but that's fine. I make a mess of pretty much everything I do. Let's be real. And I like these little tiny ones um, because when I eat it, I don't like to eat the giant cloves. Like, this one's completely clear and clean, so I'm going to put it in my done jar. No, oh, that one is too. Score. Um, but I like to eat the little teeny tiny ones when I eat it. The longer you wait, the sweeter and less garlic breath you're going to have. So it says to wait um, about 
That one doesn't go in there. Why did I do that? Um, it says to wait about three weeks, three weeks to a month. This will last for years. So the longer you wait, the sweeter it will be. If we eat it a little bit earlier or right at that three week mark, um, I noticed that we get some garlic breath for probably like 30 ish minutes or so. Um, if you brush your teeth afterwards, it'll go away. But it's not anything terrible. If you eat it before that, you're gonna smell like garlic for two days. And I'm not about that life. Um, we have to interact with other humans at our jobs, so I can't just be reeking of garlic. However, I would rather reek like garlic and not be sick than be sick and have people care what I smell like. So. really it and you want to fill it up and you want it to be just over the top of the honey by probably about an inch or so um, and you also want there to be quite a bit of space left in the top of your jar this is a lot of space I thought I had more garlic than what I did um, but when you're doing this so I'll just let it get and if you see it slowly moves down if you have like um, uh, honey that still has like some comb in it or that is really really stiff just put it in some warm water and let it kind of um, warm up a little bit so that it pours easier and you can use that as well but if you see the bubbles kind of coming up so you need to let it rest for a minute because all of that will go down and so you want it to cover and be fully saturating every single clove of garlic in there and I don't want to waste any honey, so I'm just going to let this sit upside down for just a second. So once the honey is done, kind of, and it's emptied, that is actually a really good amount of honey in that jar. Um, so I'm not going to add any more because all of that honey has a bunch of space. You will notice that your garlic starts to float to the top. Um, and it'll kind of hang out there for a little bit and I am just going to put the lid on my honey and every day I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna burp it and what that means is you just unscrew it so that it's not tight and it'll like you'll hear it let all the air out um, you'll hear it let all of the air out and then once it's done and it'll bubble up quite a bit then you just put the lid back on and that's burping it. And if it's too close to the top, that honey, when it burps, it expands and you'll see a ton of little air bubbles come up and it'll spill out the top if you haven't left enough room. Like that jar. I filled that jar up way too much. I've done it, it's been in there for about a week. Um, and so when I burp it, it all spills out the top. Uh, but it doesn't spill out the top a lot, it's just a tiny little bit. 
So as it continues to spill out the top, I just rinse off the bottle. Um, and I'll come through and tip it upside down. I won't leave it tipped upside down because of my last time I did that and left it overnight upside down. It, I didn't have the lid on tight enough and then I had a huge honey mess everywhere inside my cupboard. Um, but I'll tip it upside down for like 30 minutes to make sure that all of the honey is getting covered pretty regularly and I kind of shake it up a little bit and then put it back. And see how those bubbles are coming up? Um, and it's starting to move a little bit faster. At first, your honey will be very, very thick and sluggish, like honey is. The longer you leave it, um, it will get more liquidy. Juniper. It will get liquidy, and it will be, you'll notice that it's like, see, honey doesn't do that in the jar. And this is about a week, so it has about two more weeks to go before we'll start trying to eat that. The cloves, I left the cloves really big in this one, so I'll probably wait closer to a month. These last for years. You can put them in your cupboard and it will last for years.